Hello, good afternoon. I'm Javier Tomas Donis, and we're going to try this uh, virtual art walk. And uh, since I cannot be in my studio today, and I luckily have quite some pieces here at home uh, that I was getting ready for the um, for the main cell festival, uh, is a new production. So it's going to be an interesting art walk uh, from here. Uh, from home. Uh, my studio is actually in the art loft at Florida Craft Art. So in the when we can actually get together, come and visit me, Studio 209. It's that corner of Central and 5th Street on top of Florida Craft Art. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about some new pieces. This one right here uh, is the conversion of bifurcating paths. Uh, my inspiration, as always, is nature, and what I do is I combine metals, powder metals, or copper, and some other in elements uh, to create art by using chemistry processes. Like this one we have right back behind me is called Heaven. It's just copper, and it's patina. And then I fix that patina and that copper process and that becomes a piece. This one's one of my favorites. It's just amazing. I also have some other techniques that I use, uh, like this one over here. I use powder metals and other elements to create all these textures and colorations and, and themes inspired by nature. Uh, pretty much everything that I do it starts like this. The lamina of the copper. You see it's uh, kind of thin. And uh, what I do is I fold it in different ways or so scrunch it or create uh, different um, areas where the uh, focal points will be. If I want something to be attacked by the chemistry that I'm going to be using, then I expose those areas. If I want something to be preserved and get all that shininess from the copper, then I try to hide that area from the chemistry. After the folding and all these things of the, that I want, then I put the, um, the lamina of copper in an airtight tank and add the chemistry I want to uh, start using according to what I want to get out. Um, and then uh, after the process is done, then I open the tank and uh, pretty much things have reduced. Uh, and then I take the piece out, I open it, and I see what Mother Nature has helped me done. Uh, usually, uh, it's very spontaneous. And uh, like I said, the areas where the chemistry cannot reach, then they keep those uh, copper properties. Like right here in heaven, you see that it was folded in different directions. And uh, where the copper was exposed, he had some patina coloration and where the copper was uh, prevented to uh, be attacked or affected by the chemistry, then he kept the, the copper properties. Uh, I have another example over here, you see. There's another lamina that it hasn't been mounted or anything, but you see. In that area in the center is where I prevented the, the chemistry to go. And in the other areas, then the patina was created. And then the job that I have is to preserve that coloration on that patina <clears throat> so it won't progress and it won't change with time. <clears throat> and that's another process. And I do that with a series of uh, waxing uh, layers. And the waxing uh, layers uh, seal all the pores. It's a microcrystalline. Uh, type of uh, waxing materials. Uh, it comes from uh, England and is used actually in the British Museum to preserve their pieces.
If I want just to use the copper, then that's the end of the process. If I want to keep adding things to it, I usually use uh, mica crystals or micro bubbles, or I use uh, natural pigments uh, in powders. Uh, I use uh, other powder metals, uh, all the range from copper, silver, gold, you name it. Uh, I usually have to uh, mix those powders with a support and uh, my favorite supports are either vegetable resins or uh, insect based basins like shellac and things like that um, <clears throat> and then once it's suspended uh, I try to find those elements that react with each other and like to to have a relationship kind of and usually another thing I do people ask me if I use fire or torches or something. I have. I use uh, fire or torches. Uh, remember that the only ways to change colors in metals is either painting it, which I don't try to use, uh, heat or, or chemistry. So I use the chemistry uh, path to to change the coloration of the, of the metals, in my case, copper and, and the other powder metals I use. Uh, when I use these other processes, then I try to attach those elements to the underlying copper. And uh, sometimes the best way I can do that is submitting it to heat, but the heat I use is from Mother Nature. So I like to get the whole chemistry and the whole piece out to the sun and, and let the sun uh, use uh, its energy and the copper uh, and the chemistry start reacting with each other. It's kind of a catalyst or, uh, or thing. So I don't have to use a kiln. My kiln is, uh, is in nature. Most of the process can be done in cold too. Uh, but I actually like how the heat makes everything reacting in a very uh, particular way. The other technique I use, you just use the powder metals and the other elements uh, of chemistry that I use and create pieces like this. They usually have a more rich uh, contents of textures and colorations. Um, Sometimes I'm not sure about what colors are going to come forth because if you see the, the mica crystals that I use or the, or, or the other elements that I use, uh, usually you cannot see the coloration on, until they react with some more of the other elements. Um, I'm trying now to um, use a lot more coloration and contrast with this uh, technique. And this particular piece uh, is one of my favorites. Uh, after uh, I explain what I do with it, uh, I'm going to present to you kind of a slideshow of the last uh, production I have uh, been working on. Uh, the two that you saw that are not even mounted uh, are some of them, and some of them are already mounted but not framed. You know, nowadays it's, uh, it's a little difficult to find all those uh, materials that we need. But this one, I really liked uh, the orange kind of uh, burst of color with this intense part over here, if you can see it up close, it has a lot of textures. And then it has some kind of flat areas, but very mild, some very textured area, even when they are very light. And then I'm using um, black or something to make a very high contrast. But I like in, uh, a kind of enamel that is shiny and that it kind of frame all those colors then gives that kind of impact and contrast that I'm so working lately with these, these pieces. Well, there's some other examples. Uh, besides this one. So give me just a second, I reach for it, and I show you. Like for example, I, this is another example. 
of pretty much the same technique I've been using with uh, that other piece. If you can see, the uh, chemistry has produced all those integrate patterns. Uh, I love those kind of uh, light colors created with microcrystals. You can see uh, some shine and some texture. The greens are very pretty. This one actually, it reminds me, you know, um, the deltas on the rivers, when you see rivers from, from the sky, and then you see how all those uh, processes are getting on together and then going into different parts and, and change the landscape and coloration. That's why I love kind of that um, themes of nature. Nature has beautiful patterns that, that there's no way of, of uh, completely reproducing. Another example I want to show you. Let me see how I can get this one here. I'm going to cover my face with it. Here you go. You see? That other one has a lot of other metals like copper. It has uh, an intense cadmium yield. The copper actually broke through and the cadmium went through. It's in the it's a second layer, but it's underneath the metal. And I use this beautiful white that has some silver on it. And believe it or not, that's uh, the white and has quite some texture. And again, I'm using that black, beautiful enamel to give that, that sense of um, intense contrast. You see, I've uh, been busy lately trying to make all this uh, new feel kind of uh, on, on these new pieces and trying to develop uh, these ones for, for main sale. Uh, this is another one. It's funny, the story of this one, because I intended it to be almost a landscape and then I I sometimes, if you see in, in Facebook, I try, I'm horrible with names, so I try to uh, have the interaction of, of my, my beautiful people and, and name them. This one, believe it or not, my son was the first one who says, it looks like bacon. And so that kind of uh, bothered me a little bit. But as I keep presenting it to people, they keep saying it does look like bacon, even without sharing that later story. So guess what? I decided to name it bacon. And what I'm going to do is make lettuce and tomato and see who is brave enough to buy BLT. <laughs> that would be kind of a little funny. Maybe a restaurant would like that trip to, you know, BLT. I think it would be fun if I actually come out with it. This one actually reminds me of the situation we're going through right now. Uh, I noticed there's an area over here that looks like a heart and these, if you see, looks like uh, like galaxies or all that interaction in the universe and then all that raw kind of uh, texture over here that looks like uh, like the roughness of earth, you know. I like that smell of earth too. So this actually was a nice thing. Then with all the situation that's been going with the coronavirus and all COVID-19 and all that, you know, that kind of circular pattern over here remind me of it. So I decided to throw the high contrast white on it. And then it made me reflect. It made me think and feel like the light is coming through. And that's one of the things that I like the most about the pieces is the emotions that they elicit on you. Like heaven for me back there. Uh, this one, uh, I call it hope. The other ones have no name, but this one already have it. And uh, it reminds me of the light coming through all that darkness and all these difficulties going through. But at some point, that light will shine and will shine very, very bright. 
This one will be a nice one. Okay, I have some other ones. This one it started some other way. It started with very mellow colors and all of a sudden thing exploded into this. It's called Horizon. Uh, it's a rethought. Uh, so it's one of those pieces that start just with that part and then it becomes too earthly. And then I have to throw it to the universe and then, like I said, I'm trying to get a lot more color, a lot more contrast. And uh, I think this production is uh, giving me a very, very good vibe. That's a beautiful thing, you know, chemistry is endless and you can make so many combinations and uh, so many other things. Now, remember what I told you, sometimes I just take the copper and start adding on other chemistry, uh, other ingredients elements and ingredients and things like that if you hear me saying you know feel the power of the elements of nature this is what i mean because i just collaborate with nature then i look I, you know when everything started working i go like look mother nature what are you doing today and i get to sell it you know so it's a very nice process it makes me close you know to to mother nature and everything that's going on around so this one as you can see it has the backing of the film copper, which is the one that's been submitted just to create a patina. And then on top of that, uh, it has the enamels and, and the resins and all those other chemistry processes. More metals, as you can see over there. And uh, again, I'm now trying to create a lot more contrast. This one looks like like galaxies, like parts of space, you know. It's a little bigger. This one is 24 by 24. And that's another thing. This medium allows me to make small things and great, humongous things. I don't know if you had the opportunity to go to last year's Emerging Artists at Creative Spinellas. Uh, exhibition uh, three columns that were 10 feet tall by three and I love them actually there are four I have one hidden and it will come out sooner or later this is another example of that technique I was just referring to with the film copper as a backing and then the enamels uh, worked on it again the themes are very earth uh, inspired sometimes uh, they look like under the sea kind of scenes uh, very marine very uh, ocean like sometimes it looks like the sky and all the dynamics of what's going on sometimes it looks like you're looking uh, down at earth from a satellite and, and seeing all the landscapes that, uh, from from the sky and sometimes it looks like galaxies and the universe. So um, I know the universe manifests through these pieces when they are being created. And that's the feeling it gives me. Now, the other beautiful thing is that you can interpret and see whatever you want to see on them. Sometimes they are very wonderful, beautiful reflections and some things are very silly things. but. You know, Earth is that humorous too. I have my moments as well. Anyways, I going then to uh, prepare a nice slideshow of these and other pieces that I've been working on, and I hope you enjoy this uh, particular virtual art walk tonight. Uh, I hope uh, it is a beautiful night for you uh, that you get to learn a little bit of what I do and at some point visit me in my studio like I say it's a studio 209 in the art lofts on the second floor of Florida Craft Art in the corner of Central Avenue and 5th Street North in beautiful downtown St. Petersburg. You can also contact me 
through my website is dlcopyright.com D as in divine L as luxurious corporate.com or on Facebook by Javier T. Dones pretty much the same for Twitter and uh, and the other platforms um, I'm now adding my pieces to different directories uh, including the the St. Petersburg Arts Alliance directory um, and the Pinellas Creative Pinellas directory and some others uh, around and I'm going to try to do this video things a little bit more often so we can follow uh, the process of some of these pieces. I'm going to try to do some demonstrations not the whole thing because you know I had to keep my secret secret um, but um, you see it's going to be cool. Alright well let me get to that slideshow and I hope I see you soon.